All right, today I'm going to teach you how to uh, throw together this little uh, premium AMD Vision Barebone kit that we sold yesterday on Facebook. Now, if you're watching us on Facebook and you're lucky enough to be one of the guys to get one of these kits, uh, you know, I, I built it on the on the live stream, but, you know, Bauer was talking and I did it really slowly and I took my time. Uh, so today we're going to do it a little quicker, a little more concisely. I'm going to show you each point uh, of what we did. And then so that, that way, if you have it, uh, you know exactly how to put this thing together because it's very, very simple. It's actually one of the simplest computers to put together ever. Uh, very simple. So first, let me go through uh, the the you know the components. Uh, the 620 Athlon X4 quad core. I actually have it right here. Uh, this is the 500 watt Cooler Master uh, PSU. This is the um, MSI 22 speed DVD RW. Uh, four gigabytes of Centon 800 megahertz DDR2 memory. Uh, the 4650 uh, graphics card from AMD ATI Radeon. It's actually uh, an XFX version. I don't know, you can tell by that little thing right there. That's their symbol, uh, XFX. MSI motherboard, 750 gigabyte Seagate hard drive, uh, the CPU cooler, and then I stole Bauer's uh, screwdriver. Uh, we're gonna use that on the show because it's embarrassing and he likes it, so. Uh, all right, so anyway, uh, very simple. I started it off yesterday. I'm gonna do it the same way I did yesterday. We're gonna put the chip uh, into the motherboard and we are going uh, to uh, put the memory in and then we're gonna put the motherboard into the case and then we'll go from there. Uh, basically, all you're gonna need as far as tools is this. Uh, if you live somewhere very dry, uh, not very humid, uh, you might want to invest in a static wrist strap. Uh, you can definitely damage, especially most importantly, or most, most dangerous is your CPU. When you touch it for the first time, you can definitely damage it. Uh, so if you don't have one, uh, you should get one. I live in Miami, in Florida. It's very humid here. There's no static. Uh, I rarely statically shock myself. So uh, I'm going to bring the motherboard over here, and we're going to start uh, by dropping the chip in, uh, just in case I'm going to... Uh, let the static go by touching a metal case. And here is our Athlon 2 620 chip. And we're going to go ahead and you're going to see right in here on the socket, on the AM2 socket, there is a little uh, lever. And that lever, you're going to open it up. It's basically going to unlock the whole socket. You're also going to notice there's a little arrow right here pointing. And that arrow is what's going to tell you which direction to orient the chip. So if you see here, I have a little arrow. There's a little arrow and it's basically telling you you want to drop it in just like that. So it's really easy. Just line it up and you're going to feel it just fall right into place. Uh, you maybe want to get a little press, but you probably don't need it. It'll just fall in. And then you just want to just very gently lower this handle and lock it into place. Once that's it, you're good to go. It is done. Now, uh, the fact that I just touched that means that I put a little bit uh, of the grease from my finger on it. You definitely want to clean that off before you put the thermal grease and then on top of that put the CPU cooler. Uh, that little tiny bit of grease, you imagine it's just like 0 .000 millimeters uh, of, of lift of grease on top of the chip and you want that surface to be as flat as possible. You want the thermal grease uh, to be transferring all the heat from the internal heat spreader of the CPU uh, to the CPU cooler uh, or heat sink as much as possible. So definitely clean that off. All right, next is the thermal grease. Basically, if you bought the kit, it already has the pre-applied grease on the bottom of the heat sink, so you don't really need to apply any. Uh, because we've taken this thing apart twice already, I'm going to reapply with a tiny little bit of uh, heat sink thermal grease. And I'm just going to put like about a pea amount size, very small. You don't need to put a lot. People always put way too much. Uh, you don't need that much. Now, mounting the CPU cooler is very, very easy. Uh, I'm just going to show you real quick. It doesn't really matter which way you orient it because there are these tabs, and they're going to pretty much uh, make you only orient it one way. Uh, so basically what you want to do is just drop it right on top. Uh, you don't have to be super gentle, but maybe just a little bit gentle. And once it's on top, you're going to see these two tabs on each side. So here's this first tab. You're going to push it down. Oops, make sure it's unlocked first. You're going to push it down. It's going to lock in. Then you're going to flip it over to the other side. You're going to push that one. See, that one's locked in now. And then you're going to flip this. That's going to tension it down. Uh, now, while it's tensioned down, I usually like to, like, you know, jiggle it around a little bit uh, and make sure that make sure the, the thermal compound spreads all the way to the edges. It doesn't have to actually cover the entire CPU because the actual chips uh, on the CPU are only, like, right in the center of the entire big chip. It's an internal heat spreader on top, and the actual processes are really small, and they're right in the middle. Um, but I still want to get it even, so I do that a little bit. And then the final step uh, for mounting the CPU is to uh, use the four-pin adapter, and you're going to mount it to the motherboard. Now, most motherboards have a three-pin adapters on them. Some of them have four. Uh, in this case, you do have a four. You want to use the four because that lets the motherboard control uh, the CPU fan. And it's right there. I'm going to plug it in. And there we go. That part is taken care of. If you want to kind of like hide this little cable, 
Uh, you know, you can kind of like scoot it off to the corner, you know, kind of squeeze it in there. Uh, if not, it doesn't really matter. Next step is going to be installing the memory. Uh, these are DDR2 DIMMs. Uh, so this little tab is just a little bit offset. It means there's only one way you can put it in. It's really, really easy. Uh, kind of like when you're a little kid, Fisher Price, you know, the little square pegs and the round pegs, you can drop them in. Very simple. Uh, you're basically just going to slide it in to the slot. Push down one side first, wait for it to lock. Push on the second side, wait for it to lock, and then I usually make sure that they're locked, and I kind of give them a final little push to make sure it seats 100%, uh, but it's usually almost always perfect. Here comes the second one. Again, slide it in. Push down one side, you see it lock. Push on the other, you see that one lock. Test them both, and then a final push, make sure they're seated well. That's basically it. Uh, so now we've covered assembling the motherboard. Basically, the CPU's in, the memory's in, the motherboard's ready to go inside of the case. But before we put it in there, we have to install uh, the risers in the case. Okay, now this case already has pre-built-in risers, so you don't really have to worry uh, about putting a whole ton of them out. You actually need to put in two. The rest of them are kind of already built in. Now, the ones you want to do, uh, they're actually labeled AM and M. Uh, and that stands for ATX and Micro ATX. But basically, uh, I'm going to screw this one over here. And then the next one is going to be this one right here, uh, right in the middle. So the two that are coming from the PCI expansion slots directly across. Once the risers are in, your next step is to install uh, the input-output shield, which is right over here. Uh, basically, this is it right here. You want to make sure that it lines up. You want to you know, maybe take a look at your motherboard if you're not 100% sure. The orientation of your motherboard is this is the top. This is the top of the case. Uh, the PS2s are at the top, and you're going to pretty much just line them up right there like that. That's how you know it's in the right direction. And then from here, you're going to transfer this directly uh, to the case. Uh, now, this sometimes takes a little while. Don't get frustrated. It's not. It doesn't always go in right away. Uh, a lot of times you'll clip in one side and then the other side will pop out. Be careful with your fingers. This is an easy way to cut yourself. Uh, once it's in, you'll know. It'll all click in and you know, you'll, you'll be ready to go. Um, so that's how you install the input output shield. And once that's done, uh, you're basically ready uh, to put in the motherboard. All right, so here goes the motherboard. We're going to go ahead and stick it in. Uh, this motherboard does have this little singular post right here which kind of already put in for you. It's really neat. It's not a screw, it's just a post. It's going to line up the rest of them so it's really easy to put the screws in. Um, so here goes the motherboard. I'm going to line it up uh, with the input output shield. As you can see everything is lining up and then basically you're going to just push it in until it hits that tab or until it hits that little post. And once that post goes through, see it right there? Basically uh, now everything else is lined up. You can put all your screws in really easily and it's not going to be that hard. Uh, so let me go do that, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, now the motherboard's installed. Um, the next step I want to do is actually plug in the header for the fan. Uh, it's really simple. There's a, it's a three-pin, kind of just like the one the CPU had, except minus one of the pins. Uh, and there's definitely a bunch of different headers on the board. Um, so I'm going to go ahead uh, and install this. Uh, whoa. Close call there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug it into one of the fan headers. All right, now that's installed. Uh, the next step is actually to put the hard drive in. Again, really simple. You have these uh, toolless drive bays here. They don't even have screws. Uh, you just loosen this, slide the drive in, and you're good to go. Very, very simple. Uh, try to get the holes to line up, and then you put the tab right back in. Next step is the uh, DVD drive. Very simple. Uh, same thing again. You just remove the quick release, slide the DVD drive uh, in. You got to make sure that it uh, goes all the way in. You're going to see when it's you know, perfectly in, uh, the holes are going to line up right there. And once those are lined up, you can basically uh, drop in the quick release and you know, screw it back in. Once the DVD drive is in, next step is the uh, graphics card. Very, very simple. Uh, first of all, actually, you're going to need to uh, unscrew the quick release on this side. Rather than having you screw in, they kind of just give you this, uh, this little quick release here. So uh, unscrew it, take that one little screw out. The whole thing kind of uh, comes up, slides off. And that's going to let you put in your graphics card. Without that, you wouldn't be able to get it in. Uh, graphics card, I mean, it's a no-brainer. PCI Express 2.0 is the blue one. Uh, it's the only one it's going to line up with. You're going to drop it right in, and it will just slide in perfectly. Put the quick release back, tighten it down with a screwdriver, and we're almost home free. 
Uh, it's basically almost completely assembled. The only thing we're missing is the power supply to power everything. Uh, so now everything is, is pretty much secured, as you can see in here. Uh, everything's in the right place. Everything's secured. we got to just tie uh, the DVD burner and the SATA hard drives with the SATA cables uh, to the motherboard, and then install the power supply, uh, plug the power up to everything, and it's going to be ready to turn on. Uh, so let's go to the next step, which is going to be hooking up the SATA cables. All right, so here's the SATA cable. Uh, you can see it's got that little L shape. That's how you know which way to put it. Uh, so very simply, we're just going to go ahead and plug it right into the hard drive. Uh, the other place that it goes is over here on the motherboard. These are your SATA headers. Your motherboard supplies six of them. So you can put up to six hard drives in here. Uh, installing those, again, is very easy. You're just going to uh, basically plug it in. It doesn't fit. Flip it over. I'm doing it the wrong way. There you go. Very, very easy. Now, I like to kind of hide the cable a little bit. We're not going to do a lot of cable management on this case, but you know, if you want to be a little bit more particular with your cable wiring, you can feel free to start zip tying and making it really pretty. Uh, the next one is going to be the DVD drive. The step is going to be identical. We're going to get the SATA cable. We're going to match up the little L, and we're going to plug it right in. Uh, now, again, here's the other end. It's going to go into the motherboard. It can go anywhere on the motherboard. It can go below this one, over here, down there. It really does not matter. Your computer does not care. Uh, the SATA is all interchangeable. And now the, both the hard drive and the DVD drive uh, are plugged into the motherboard. Everything is ready to go. So next, before we put in the power connector, uh, the next step is going to be basically to do the front panel. Uh, now this is like the second to last step pretty much. It's not even really a step, but it's basically going to hook up the USB ports, the eSATA, uh, and the, you know, the, the sound for the front panel connectors, the power and reset buttons. It's going to hook them all up. Here's where you need to have your manual. Inside of the manual for the MSI motherboard, uh, there's a diagram that shows you uh, exactly what pins are what. Co. So here's the power LED. We have the power switch. We have the reset switch. And we have uh, the hard disk drive LED activity lights. You need to find the pin for each one of these and make sure that it goes into the right pin uh, on the motherboard. Also, uh, included in this little bundle of wires are two fatter wires, kind of rainbow colored. Uh, this one is a USB. So it's going to plug into the USB header, and this is the HD audio. It's going to plug into the HD audio, and uh, I'll show you where those are right now. First thing we're going to plug in is the USB. Uh, there is four headers on this board. It's a lot of USB ports that you can add to this motherboard if you so desire. Uh, we're going to add it to the one that says JUSB4, but you can do any of the four that are at the bottom. It's the same thing. Notice that there's one pin missing. There's one pin blocked off on the plug, and there's one pin missing on the board. You know, make sure they line up. Don't want to break anything. Uh, once you have the USB header in, next one is going to be the uh, audio port. It's going to just plug in. It's actually on the far, far left-hand side. You're going to plug the one that says HD audio into the far left-hand side. Now here's the part where you need to have the actual manual. Uh, on page 15, you're going to see a wiring diagram. I don't know if you want to zoom in here real quick. Uh, but basically, it's going to tell you uh, what pin goes where for what connector, and just kind of orient it based upon that missing pin. You're going to see that missing pin that has uh, no pin on it, and then there's a reserved number 9 next to it. That's how you orient it. Uh, make sure your motherboard's facing the same direction, and then just plug in uh, all these little front panel connectors. All right, final step is to install the power supply. Uh, it's pretty easy, but it's probably a little bit more complicated. Fan facing down because there is this uh, grate right here. I don't know if you can see it, but there is a clear, uh, there's a grate there, so it's going to let air in. Uh, and there's also this little tab over here in the corner. You kind of don't want it to hit that, so make sure you slide past it. Once you get it in there, we're going to uh, secure all four screws, uh, and then we're going to plug everything in on this harness to the appropriate locations. You're almost home free. The first thing you're going to want to plug in uh, is the 20 plus 4 uh, motherboard connector. This is the motherboard power. Basically, you're going to be using both of these. It's a 24-pin motherboard. And uh, just make sure that it clips in all the way. The clip right here is going to be facing out. Once it's uh, nice and secure and the little tab hits, that means you're good to go. You can move to the next step, uh, which happens to be the 8-pin, or actually, in this case, it's a 4-pin. This is the 12-volt power. This is what powers the CPU. Uh, or the processor. Now this motherboard only has a four pin, so you're going to use one of these, it doesn't matter which one, and it goes to the top left, so if you can't find it, top left there's a four pin connector and that's where it's going to go. 
Uh, same deal, just plug it in, make sure it looks good. The last two things to plug in are the uh, hard drive and the DVD drive. Um, if you don't know what a SATA plug looks like, this is what it looks like. It's got a little L in it. It's a little bit longer than the actual SATA data plug. Uh, but basically, you're going to plug one into the DVD drive and the other into the hard drive. Uh, very simple. Just make sure to match up the little L. And uh, that's basically it. Very simple. Once you finish this, your system is pretty much done. So let's finish it up. And that's basically it. Now you're pretty much done. Uh, the computer's assembled, everything's powered, the front switches and the front panel connectors are together. That means the USB ports and the eSATA and all the stuff on the side are going to work. In this case, it's just two USB 2.0 ports. The sound's going to work out of the front. Uh, the power and reset switches are going to work, and the whole thing is ready to turn on. Close up your side, close it up, and you're good to go. And that's it. Uh, so very simple. Uh, like I said, it doesn't take very long. If you're, if you're quick, and even if you've never done this before, you probably get it done in maybe 45 minutes to an hour if you really take your time. Uh, we just did it now in about 30 minutes and we're recording and doing all this stuff. So it's actually uh, very simple and this one's especially simple because you don't have to power up the video card. The video card gets its own power from the uh, PCI Express bus and that's basically it. So very, very simple. Uh, it's the AMD Vision uh, Premium Barebone Kit and that is how to install it. If you have any questions, feel free to email me and I'll see you guys next time. Yeah. <laughs>